you can actually see that those are the places that they're working at. The top employer outcomes of this school are these places. Literally, Starbucks. Yo, my name is Andrew Hiller. My YouTube channel is almost entirely dedicated to fitness and CrossFit in particular. And today I'm going to be talking about the $10,000 loan forgiveness given out by Joe Biden to a handful of people who can't afford their student loans. I want to do this because I had a conversation with an individual today that I hope to give you guys a whole bunch of perspective because everyone from what I've seen is pissed off that people have signed up for something that they're not going to be able to pay for. And this is actually something that I actively looked for when I put up a Instagram story, which was the gains. And it's Will Smith walking down the freaking street and he's like pumping his fist because he's going to get $10,000 loan forgiveness. He can put it into his OnlyFans subscriptions and he can see a whole bunch of more naked people and good for him. Underneath of which I put my story. My story was I graduated from a local college. I had $50,000 in student loan debt. I paid that off in about five years. I'm a unique case. I know that. I lived at home until I was 27. I had a good at home life. I lived with my dad my sister was in and out of college. She went away to Iowa. And a lot of people who watch this know that I partially owned a CrossFit affiliate. And I never saw the point to kind of moving out when all I really did was sleep in that bed and then spend all day in the CrossFit affiliate. So I'd go home, I'd sleep, and then I'd go to the CrossFit affiliate. I'd spend 14 hours a day there. And then I'd go home and sleep and rinse and recycle and repeat. The same thing happened with me and college because I went to college because I wanted to learn something. Most people that I knew that went to college wanted to get the college experience. They wanted to join the fraternity. They wanted to go party. They wanted to drink. That is what I heard when I heard the college experience. I want to get away from home. I'm like, well, in my opinion, home wasn't so bad. I know that's not the case for everybody. I really didn't see a world in which spending twenty dollars to $30,000 a year on top of the money spent to go to the college was worth it to have your room and board covered. So I made the 20-minute drive every single day to go to a local college where I thought that I would get a, at the very minimum, a similar level of education to a four-year big university somewhere else, which was maybe 100 to 200 miles away which is what a lot of people in my situation did. I'm from Chicago. Some people went to ISU. Some people went to University of Illinois. Some people went to Purdue. Some people went to the city, but all of which they were within shouting distance of home. And I just didn't see the freaking point. While I was in school, I also didn't see the point of like studying abroad. It's like, I'm going to go study abroad and I'm going to go to Italy. And when you go to Italy and it costs you $10,000 when you're in school and it sounds all well and good, just take out some other loan. It's going to pay for your trip to Italy. You're there for maybe three to five weeks in maybe December, which was what the case was in my school. It was called D-term and you had a six week period where you could do whatever the fuck you wanted. What I did is I worked. And what a lot of people did is they'd go study abroad, spend $10,000. But what people don't understand is that when you take out the loans, they end up costing two to three times as much than if you were to just pay for it straight up. That $10,000 trip to Italy costs you $30,000 when you've got to pay it off when you're now my age at 30 years old. This is the thing that pisses everybody off right now in the world about the loan forgiveness is that somebody has to pay these things off and why shouldn't it be the people who signed up for those things in the first place? What I like to do in relation to my fitness content is there's something going on and there's people over here who say some shit about it and there's people over here who say some shit about it. It happens with just about everything in the world. And what I really try to practice is I want to sit right in the middle, hear what they say over there, hear what they say over there and take what makes the most sense to me and then throw it onto the internet at this point. It's been a pretty good formula there. So I'm going to use that formula here. And from what I've heard so far, it's everybody over here. When I put up my little post on my story, I was looking for someone to give me something back where I could skew myself a little bit this way. And it happened. I was reached out to by a friend of mine who is a physical therapist. And this physical therapist, of course, needs three additional years of schooling. So there's four years of undergraduate, which were covered through scholarships. This is a smart person who did everything they needed to do to get all the scholarships covered. So that one's off the board. We don't even need to talk about the four years of undergraduate. The three years in graduate school, which is required to be a physical therapist, ended up accumulating a debt of about 150 $50,000. That's because when you're in this program, the schooling is about thirty dollars to $40,000 a year. That's just for the tuition. And then also being part of this program, you can't work. Your job is to learn and become a physical therapist. So it's not that you can just have a job that's going to subsidize and allow you to live. So you've got to take out a little bit of extra money so that you can live a life while you're learning for these three years of graduate school. The amount of money ended up being $150,000 when it was all said and done. And I had a phone call of about 20 minutes. And over the course of that 20-minute phone call, I found out that the 
amount of money that a typical physical therapist makes coming out of graduate school in your first job is about $60,000. And at this point in time, they've worked their way up into about a 70 or so thousand dollar a year position. The issue becomes that if you want to pay this thing off in 10 years, which would make sense, you've got to pay about $2,000 a month, which is about the cost of a mortgage, just about anywhere. And that's not a small house. It's a pretty good house. If I do idiot math really quick and say you're making $75,000 as a physical therapist, and you've got to spend $2,000 a month after taxes, it ends up being about 40% of your income that needs to go right into that student loan for the next 10 years in order for you to pay that thing off. And that's because of compounding interest. And that's the big thing that this individual wanted to tell me about. I know about compounding interest, but I guess I didn't understand the gravity of it. And I also didn't think about it in relation to physical therapists. This is the big thing, because when you hear physical therapist, when you hear chiropractor, you kind of think almost doctor, right? Someone who's a doctor, they're making 100, 200, 300, 500 thousand dollars a year. And when they accumulate all of this debt to become a doctor, whatever, fuck it. They are going to do it because they're going to make enough money to pay it off eventually and maybe even rather soon. But when you think about a physical therapist, that $150,000, $2,000 a fucking month for the next 10 years, 40% of your income, that's not something that's easy to do, especially if you've got kids and you've got a house and you've got to just take care of yourself in general, where you were making $75,000 a month for 10 years, you're essentially really making maybe 40 to $45,000 a month because that 20 off the top, just get rid of it because that's going to school. Fuck it. Don't forget it. I mean, whatever. You might as well be making a minimum wage job the way that you're going to live for the next decade as a freaking doctor. Because when you're a physical therapist, that three extra years of school, you are a doctor of physical therapy. This is the buzz in my head that I wanted to put into you guys' head. This doesn't just apply to everyone that you think. The people that I think of, and I know someone rather close who went to a school in the city and in the city, I pulled up these statistics somewhere. One second, let me pull these statistics up. This school in the city before financial aid was about $50,000 a year. That's just to do the schooling, right? After aid, it was about $27,000 just to do the schooling. This school that I'm talking about accepts everybody. And because they accept everybody, that means that you usually won't apply for all of that aid. So your tuition is probably going to be more towards that $50,000 mark than it will be towards that $27,000 mark. So we're going to assume that. And just for the fun of the video, let's say that it ends up being about $200,000 after the four years. And that's undergraduate school. What I want to do now is I'm going to scroll down a little bit on this easy to look at Google thing that I brought up. And the typical average income after 10 years is $41,000. So let's say you this individual, you graduated in four years, you have a $200,000 debt and your average income is $41,000. We're going to compare that to the physical therapist that had $75,000 in debt that had $150,000 in debt, which is 50,000 less. And they're making $35,000 more a year than this person from the local school that I'm talking about. Most of you guys are familiar with the second situation where somebody went to a school that was way too much money because it was the thing to do. You've got to go to college, right? Good for you. You went to college. High five. Four years later. Okay. Now what do I do? It's like, well, you got to pay off that $200,000 loan. How am I going to do it? My job only pays me $40,000 after 10 years of working it. Why is my job only paying me that much money? Well, if you go over a little bit and you see the freaking degrees that you're getting, most people from this college are cinematography and film video production. 20% of the people who went to this school graduate with that degree. And then you see things like animation, graphic design, fashion apparel, game and interactive design, acting, radio, television, recording arts, music management, creative writing, dramatic theater, photography, music, illustration, retail management, music theater, fine arts, and studio management. You see that stuff and you understand why these people are coming out of school making $41,000 after 10 years. It's probably because they're still working at Starbucks or maybe they're working at freaking Target. They're doing that sort of stuff. You know what? If I go to the first page, you can actually see that those are the fucking places that they're working at. The top employer outcomes of this school are these places. Literally Starbucks. And I brought up compounding interest earlier in this. So let's say that you are coming out of the aforementioned local school to me, and there was a $200,000 in debt. Let's say you want to pay this thing off in about 25 years, because there's no way you're going to pay it off in 10 years, like the physical therapist. 25 year term, 6% interest, which is about average. Your total interest on your $200,000 loan is about $186,000. So you're almost paying twice as much, but wait, there's more. Your monthly payment has to be $1,289 in order for you to do that. So for the next 25 years of your life with your $40,000 a year job, you've got to pay $1,289 a month to do that. Let me pull out my phone really quick and do some idiot math again. So $40,000 after tax, you're probably making what? $32,000? 
divided by 12, $2,666 a month is about what you're taking home after taxes and 1200 or so dollars of that, about half of your monthly income for 25 fucking years are going to your college loan to pay that fucker off. And I sit here and now I understand why some people are so mad. They're mad because that's fucking idiotic. How can you go do that stuff to yourself? Well, because they're 18 years old, they don't know any better and everyone thinks that it's the best idea in the world to go to college, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's mad about that. And rightfully so, you should be mad. And you should be even more mad if it's now you who has to pay for that person being a freaking idiot going to school. The part that you need to understand is there are individuals out there, like the physical therapist, who did everything the right way. They had their four years done, covered through freaking scholarships. And then the three years, they did what they had to do because it's what comes with the nature of becoming a physical therapist. This individual that I've talked to, they've been making the payments and the compounding interest not decreased the amount of their loans, but it has increased from one hundred and fifty to one hundred ninety thousand dollars, and that's because this individual had to make minimum payments for a period of time. They have a family they've got to provide for, and they've got other life things that they have to do that get in the way. They brought up things such as inflation. They brought up other points that made sense, such as when people are given freaking checks, twelve hundred dollar checks, it makes everything more expensive. So that one hundred fifty thousand dollars that you owe way back then is now way more expensive present day relatively because this person's not a freaking idiot. This physical therapist clearly isn't an intelligent individual. They have a plan to pay it off at some point. And that's the good thing. That's the biggest thing about this person. This is probably why I was most receptive because there is a plan in place to pay it off now over, I think what would hopefully had been 10 years, but they will try to do over the next 15 years because this person takes responsibility for their actions. This person signed the dotted line as a plan where most of the world doesn't have a plan and they want everyone else to make up for their mistakes. And that's the fucked up part about it. And I can get down to that. The entire point of this video was to shed light on the people who did things the right way and are still getting fucked over. This person who did things the right way said that that $10,000 financial aid relief will do absolutely nothing to help their lives out. It will do zero. But what they said in relation to that stimulus check, the $1,200 check, is it's going to make everything worse. It's essentially the exact same thing in a different form. Because if you give everyone a $1,200 check and they go to Disney World or some shit, it's like that person that I brought up in college that for a freaking D term for a couple weeks took $10,000 loan and went over to Italy. You're going to have to pay for that fucking thing at some point in time. It's going to cost you way more. That stimulus check, which was $1,200, which you should have just saved to spend on groceries, but you went and spent on a fucking trip to Disney World. Well, now milk is $6 a gallon. That trip to Italy, where it was $10,000, if you would have just gone to Italy, that's what it would have cost you. It's going to cost you $25,000 when you actually pay it off when you're 40 years old. Because you thought it was a good idea to go to college, $200,000 and making $40,000 a year, you're just going to sit there and you're going to bitch and complain about how you can't pay it off where all you had to do was do three Google searches to see if it would have made even a minimal amount of sense like I just did and you can clearly see that it didn't. That doesn't mean it doesn't matter. that you should just be forgiven for it. But I did ask this individual on the phone what they thought would be the best way to get out of it. And they said something like, if you show that you are in good standing, paying your student loans off, you have a plan, let's say it's a 10 to 15 year plan like this individual has, that they stop the compounding interest because really you shouldn't fuck the banks over because the banks, it's a business. Don't fuck them over. You can't just say, you guys stop paying. And they do probably do this because they want to make money through the interest accrued, duh. But after five years, if you're a college student who's a fucking idiot signing a dotted line because everyone's signing a dotted line, after five years of being in good standing, it's something to work towards. And then all of a sudden the interest stops and your principal stays the same. And in the example of this physical therapist that I talked about, let's say that they're in good standing and they bring that 190 down to 150 again over five years that just stays there that is the number that they've got to pay off and they can do that at their own will over the rest of time so it's something that still requires the people to pay off their debt because they're the ones who signed up for it in the first place but it doesn't put it on the tax paying americans that piss off everybody and it also really doesn't screw over the banks because they're still making money hand over fist over the whole bunch of fucking world of idiots that signed up to go to the two hundred thousand dollar schools where really they should have been doing what i was doing and living in your parents freaking basement driving to school school, listening to podcasts and learning more about the stuff that you wanted to learn about, not spending $30 a fucking weekend on Keystone lights and a 30 rack, not going to class because you overslept and wasting everyone's time and money. And yeah, remember, I know that I'm fortunate, but everybody can figure something out where it makes more sense than the stuff that got us here in the first place. I hope that you leave this video with the perspective of the physical therapist and knowing that not everyone is a complete fucking retard when it comes to money. Some people are getting fucked by the system because they want to be a physical therapist. They want to be a chiropractor. And the only way that you do that is apparently going to fuck you over when you want to have a family
family and you're in your late 20s, early 30s, and now you're working towards it until you're 50, and then you're finally in the clear, but then you're basically dead. What do you think? Andrew Hiller out.